Hello, my dear class. How are you all? Class, today we will begin from from the slide where we left. We just studied that how we can distinguish among elements, compounds, and mixtures, and the concept, the logic is very simple that elements and compounds are considered as the pure substances because they have their definite composition and their properties are sharp and specific. But when we talk of the properties of mixtures, they are not pure substances. That's why their properties depend on their composition and the composition can be changed. That is why the mixtures do not have any fixed melting and boiling points and other qualities now today we will continue with another concept that we will try to learn how we can separate the components of a mixture so this class this lesson will be all around the discussion of how we can separate the constituents of a mixture so we learn about filtration Filtration is a process which is used to separate solids from liquids or gases using a filter medium that allows the fluid to pass through but not the solid. So in short we can say, in short we can say filtration is a separation technique which can separate solid from liquid. And for this, we need a filtering medium. Here, we can perform this experiment or this activity in our labs also. That for this, we will be needing a funnel which seems like this. It, this parrot is made up of glass and we use it for filtration. Then, the mixture is placed in the speaker. Suppose this mixture has sand and water okay so here we have the filtering medium that's called as a filter paper now what is this filter paper is basically a paper which is made up of cellulose a very special paper which has very small pores on it and when we pass the mixture over it only the liquid or the smaller molecules can pass that paper and the bigger size solid particles will be is stuck here will be stopped here so as we run this mixture of sand and water through it the liquid drops will come down and blocking the sand on this that's why this medium is called as filter paper because it, it does filter and the liquid which is coming down which is passing the fil filter paper is called as a filtrate but the solid which is blocked here or which is collected on the paper is called as the residue so this is how this method filtration is used to separate solid from liquid for example we can separate sand from water by filtration you see again so many applications in our daily life the water filters are purifying water removing any dirt and other substances which can be found in the water tap water and you see this tea bag is allowing only the extract mixed in liquid but the tea leaves are still packed in the paper so this paper is working as a filter paper as you see the filters used in our cars the oil filters they are also helping us to filter the oil so similarly these substances are not only separated in on a small scale these methods are applied on large scale in industries you see the water purification plant it's such a big plant which is cleaning water using the filtration technique to make it usable for human beings now the next method is evaporation evaporation is the process 
by which we can separate a liquid into a gaseous state and this is the process of evaporation when we heat a liquid this is our normal observation that when we heat liquid it turns into gas or vapors so evaporation will be the method by which we can dissolve uh, we can separate this dissolved solids from water suppose here we have a mixture of salt and water and out of this mixture the salt is dissolved in this water I cannot separate by filtration because that's not insoluble like sand. So by heating this mixture, the water will be evaporated to air, leaving behind the salt molecules in the china dish. So by evaporating all liquid, all water by heating, I can get back my dissolved salt. But this method can also be performed for those substances which are sensitive towards heat which have a lower melting point so we can heat them on this water bath or we, we rather call it as a steam bath here we are heating the water which is taken in this beaker and producing steam or water vapor then this china dish is not heated directly on the flame but it is heated by means of steam so both of the methods are used on small scale and on the large scale as well but remember that evaporation is the separation method or technique which can separate dissolved solids from water now what is the use of evaporation you see all the rock salt is obtained by evaporating the ocean water and this is almost free of cost now today you will also learn about distillation distillation is a separation of constituents of a liquid mixture so when we have a liquid mixture and we want to separate them distillation is the selected method where by which we can separate a mixture of liquids now what's the principle which runs here you see the apparatus here we have a round bottom flask this one we have a thermometer we have a tripod stand a bunsen burner and this is a condenser the water condenser and here we have a conical flask just to get the distillate how it works look we have a mixture of liquid a and liquid b in this flask which is sealed you see the cork is sealing it okay by bunsen burner we are heating this mixture of liquid a and b suppose liquid a has boiling point 78 degrees celsius and liquid b boils at 100 degrees celsius i'm just giving you an example on heating at 78 degrees celsius out of this mixture the vapors of a will rise up because that's the boiling point of liquid a not the b so liquid a will rise up and we can read this from the thermometer okay now the liquid vapors will rise up and will be coming out of this outlet and will be passing through this condenser now they are hot enough because they are in vapor phase they are in the gaseous phase right this running water which is letting in the condenser and coming out from this side so this water is cool will cool these vapors which are passing through the inner tube and will also be condensed to form the liquid again so the liquid makes it vapors which rise up passes the condenser and then comes down as a distillate so out of this mixture a and b around 78 degrees celsius i'm getting only liquid a here so that's a method of boiling and separating the mixture when 78 temperature is achieved liquid a is separated and when all the liquid a is separated on further heating when temperature will be reaching 100 degrees celsius liquid b will rise up will boil up and the vapors again will be passing through the condenser and collected in a separate container 
so this is how by using distillation method we can separate a mixture of liquids on the basis of yes on the basis of boiling point and it is used in a very large industry not single industry look we have two examples for it first the fractional distillation is performed on a very large scale to separate petroleum into useful fractions you know petroleum is the black oil liquid which is obtained as a mineral from earth and as it is a mixture of so many valuable compounds in it we separate in different groups which are called as fractions suppose first group is petroleum gas the next fraction is gasoline which is a fuel then kerosene diesel oil industrial fuel oil lubricating oil and bitumen so all of these were combined in petroleum but they are separated on the basis of distillation at the different boiling points they are collected in separate vessels and you know we can also distill air the normal air is cooled and then distilled in an industry to get oxygen to get noble gases very important gases nitrogen so this is how we can also get the constituent gases out of this mixture of air so on a very large scale we are performing the process of distillation to separate the mixture constituents another very sensitive technique of separation is chromatography chromatography is a laboratory technique for the separation of mixtures the mixture is dissolved in a fluid which can be gas solvent and water it is called a mobile phase which carries it through the system a column a capillary tube a plate or a sheet and the plate on which the fixed material is placed is called a stationary state and why we use it you know chromatography is used to analyze or to separate or to identify different compounds in a mixture such as inks or urine samples then food colorings and fruit juices so this is how these mixtures can be separated very sensitively you see the chromatography is performed which is simply displayed in this diagram you just have a look to understand what goes on Chromagra chromatography we have a paper again a cellulose paper on which this sample drop is plotted we have a sample drop here okay then this paper is dipped in the solution and the this mobile phase the liquid the solvent it will rise up in the paper as it will be soaking up the paper so when the solvent will rise up in the paper the components in this ink which is a mixture will also start rising up and they will rise on the basis of their molar mass or their heaviness you see the same dye is separated into different colors so you see we learn that how many types of components or how many colors are present in any dye you see the beautiful prints on the fabric on the plastic sheet these days on the furniture we have different color farmica or coatings on it so how these colors are made these colors are made and mixed and studied using chromatography now i'm leaving you with the hope that these videos will be enough support to understand about mixtures from chapter number 4 just watch the watch the video carefully then go through the stuff or the lines or the di study the diagrams from the textbook then come to learn the question answers and scientific reasons associated to each topic i'm leaving you with the hope that you are taking care and you are studying at home Take care God bless you and wait for my next video God bless you